What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors and we are in the outdoors. And of course, I'm Clayton Chick. Today's mission, shallow water walleyes. I've got a friendly competition coming up against my buddy Jay Siemens again and another Jay versus Clay in a few days. And we're having a competition for the most walleye in eight hours. I lost the first competition. I got to pick the second one. And I felt since I sucked so badly in the first one, I was really gonna go at it hard. And we're gonna try to put a stupid amount of walleyes in the boat. Like, I mean, crazy. Not gonna throw any numbers out there, but I have a goal in mind. I'll tell you if I hit it. I'll tell you what the goal is, even if I don't hit it after, but it's large. I have a game plan. Like I said, that I'm not gonna release everything today with my game plan. Today, we're going to do some locating though with the side imaging right now. And we're gonna go find some areas that I think should be holding fish right now. Our water degree, temperature here or water degree our water temperature right now is 63.5 degrees which means the wall I should be sliding up into the shallows that like six feet to two feet maybe even a foot of water something in there we're going to pitch some jigs do some slip bobbers a couple other methods possibly yeah so let's go find some fish on the side imaging first I'll show you what they're gonna look like lots of driving around today I won't show obviously all that we're gonna check new areas and we're going to hopefully put a bunch of walleyes in the boat today just to get us ready to crush Jay Jay I'm coming for you like this means business this time I took it easy on you the first time kind of hurt me a little bit because I got demolished but this time there's no mercy like I'm going to destroy you so I find that ultimate speed when you're looking on your side imaging is usually between that like two and a half to five miles an hour where it just seems like you get your best read out you can read the screen the best of course i'm not an expert in this everybody else is going to have some other way they do it but i will uh, attempt to show you how to read the side imaging just a little bit as i go or at least what fish should look like on a side imaging I'm only reading right now 60 feet off the left, 60 feet off the right. You want to try to keep a straight line for the most part, because as soon as you start to turn, everything just kind of gets all messed up in there. Your readings become a little bit different. So I came right at the shore here where I know I want to fish a little bit down the shoreline here. This point, I'm going to check the top side of this point first here where the wind's pounding, and then I'm going to come around the end. Came up nice and sharp, eight feet. I probably want to sit in about I don't know, 10 feet and side imaging in a little bit. So that right there, these could be fish, these little white specks there. They are, it's small. It looks like I got some rock debris gravel on my right hand side here. That's a fish there. See the little white speck with the shadow lower? I would say that's a fish. Obviously, some fish are gonna show up better than other fish. It's sometimes you'll you'll look on your side imaging and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, like there's like the body and the tail carp show up really well on here That's, that'd be a fish right here see a little white speck up higher a little shadow smaller fish though like i said off the right hand side there's a little bit of gravel out here it looks like maybe some rock there's lots of stuff going on here that looks like some bait and some fish mixed in possibly i need to clean this screen real quick that's what i need to do I'm gonna anchor or tell him down in about seven feet and we're going to cast up the shore here and we're gonna pop our jig back down really, really slow. Jigs and leeches will be one of the techniques I'm gonna use against Jay. I'm not gonna lie, we're gonna do a straight leech presentation, whether it's on a slip bobber or a jig, either pitching towards shore and casting type of thing or straight up and down vertical. It's gonna move just slow presentations. I'm gonna have some likely to be some really fast periods of action where it's like one after another and then I'm probably gonna have a couple slow periods as well oh I forgot how much I love fishing I forget how much I love fishing until I go out and I'm like oh yeah I really love fishing I've got a nice breeze blowing in on this point it's not a very pronounced point by any means but there's definitely a little point here some a spot that I've fished in the past that can be quite loaded with fish. I just got a bite right there. Instant. Jay, you are in trouble, Jay. Like, you are in trouble. <laughs> this isn't good for you at all. First cast, Jay. First cast. Not even netting it. Jay, you're in trouble. That's one. 
should I keep track today? No, we're not gonna keep track of the pre-fish. That's one though. You can see when I sit down, because I'm not moving right now, the images aren't super clear on the side imaging, but you can see here some fish here. There's a white mark there with a shadow, white mark up there. Can't really see the shadow though. That possibly could be a fish. When you're not moving with the side imaging, at times it's a little bit harder to mark the fish. You are gonna mark it though. You're gonna notice that there's, there's stuff gonna come through your side imaging that wasn't there before. So something's changing, right? If there's a log there, you're gonna have a consistent mark the whole time. But if there's just like a blip and all of a sudden nothing, it's obviously something that came into the screen. And I don't even know how to explain that, but there's something there. Okay, so we're going to pick about three, four fish off this point, And then we're gonna keep moving. We wanna have like 10 spots that we can go up against Jay. Now, if it's happening, I might stay anchored in one spot all day and not move. If I got fish moving through there, I might stay in one spot, but I need to have a couple different spots ready to go for that day. Really slow, slow everything down. Don't be too fast when you're pitching them in. Just pop it along the bottom slow. Sometimes let it sit there for 15, 20 seconds and pop it again, but really slow. Keep a tight line, but your jig on the bottom so you can feel that fish pick it up at all. Oh, instantly again. Come on. Uh, he, I could have hit him there, maybe. Oh, he's swimming at it with it. He's swimming at it. I should have hit him. He picked it up and he was swimming with it. All of a sudden I went and I, I felt when I went to twitch it and there was just like, it was all slack. There was nothing really there. It was in his mouth and he was swimming at me. Lots of times with these fish, you don't want to hit them like instantly. And I say that, I'll tell you, I'll show you why right away after I get rid of this fish here. Two fish, two casts. So I, I was going to say that you don't want to always hit these fish instantly when you feel, when you feel that first bite. Now, obviously if they grab onto it and there's weight, you're probably going to hit them, but you guys all felt that bite from like a walleye or perch where it's like a tick, tick, tick. What that is, picture this, your leech. They come up behind it or your minnow, whatever, and it's like tick. That's your first tick. They grab right here and they go tick, tick. So they like, they, they, they attack the bait, they grab it, and then they do a thing where they go tick, tick, tick. And they kind of like, as they're opening their mouth, they're, they're pushing water through their gills or they're sucking water in and that's sucking the bait in too. And it's just like a tick, tick, tick. Picture like a, a snake or something when they grab onto something and now they have to like turn it around in their mouth without letting it get away. It's the same thing. They grab it and it's like tick. Tick, 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 tick. And usually by that third tick, they got the hook. So sometimes if it's a really soft bite, just give them a second. Don't, don't ham it right away. Keep your line so it's tight and you can feel what's going on, but you don't want to have the rod completely loaded. Then when you feel that last little tick, and this is all happening in a pretty fast motion, of course, you're going to have your rod right where it's part loaded to it's at its max, and then you're going to pop the hook. And every rod's different, right? Like this rod, is a little bit stiffer and every rod's different right so this rod will load a lot sooner at its capacity right there this is actually more of a vertical jigging rod it is a six foot three i believe yeah six foot three fast action so it's loading more right here so it's at its full load right here so it's like tick 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 let it load and then set your hook on a full load you don't want to set the hook when the rod's not loaded or else your rod's going to load first and then it'll it'll hit the meat of its uh the meat of the backbone or whatever it is and then you're going to pull it through so what'll happen is if you set the hook before your rod loads you're not getting your most capacity right here because it's going to it's going to load the rod first and then it's going to finish through like and then you have a rod like this that i use for slip slip bobbers and for rigs where it loads a lot later so you need to even wait longer you need to like kind of tighten it up until it gets about there until you set the hook because if you set that hook when the rod's not loaded it's you're just going to end up missing out and you're going to pull the first you're gonna let that fish know what's going on. You wanna like tighten that load up in your rod before you actually jam that hook. It's a technique that I've 
got a lot better at over the years in terms of pitching jigs and I'm obviously learning how to use slip bobbers now but there's there's an art to it for sure it's not just it's not just setting the hook as soon as you feel something there is something to it believe it or not and this is all I'll be using probably I shouldn't say 50 percent of the time I'm gonna use a slip bobber too a lot these little bite me jigs there right here this is a 3 8 ounce I get them all in Regina at Pokies they sell them online they're a popular jig I've used them for a lot of years I forget what his name is Wayne Tumac or something like that I think that makes them bite me jigs Pokies and this one is like a white glow okay cast three I'm gonna catch three I'm gonna catch two more fish and I'm gonna move on and look for somewhere else because I know that this spot's gonna probably hold fish. There's no sense beating it up today, that's for sure. I'm gonna save it and beat it up against Jay. Beautiful night. Oh, I just got picked up. On fire, three cast, three fish. And they're in tight, like they're in probably two feet of water. They're up shells. In fact, when I, when I set the hook on that one, a bunch of minnows exploded. He'll, and this is obviously, you know, a secret that you're going to get from watching videos that you don't always have to be fishing out deeper or trolling or anything like that. You would not believe how skinny of water these walleye will sit in at times, like up in a foot of water. Okay. I can't resist. I got to catch one more. I got to see if I can go four for four and then move on to another spot because I'm fishing barbless. These little bait buttons are so handy. So handy. Even when you have a barb on your hook to keep your bait on, the bait buttons are sure pretty handy. Okay. Can we go four for four? Four for four? It's like not even prime time right now. It's 5.30. So it's like, it's not even prime time. And they're insane yet. This spot would light up at last light. Like light up. Oh, I just got bit again. <laughs> four casts and four, four fish and four casts. Oh boy. Okay. I'll probably net them come competition day. Although I don't know for sure if this, if pretty confident with slinging fish, if it's going to speed it up and I'll touch a net, let's go look for another spot and then uh, maybe explain some side imaging stuff. But that's four casts, four fish. <laughs> Jay. Maybe I should put this video up before the competition and you can buy your way out of this one or something because this isn't good for you. This is not good. We could beat that spot up right now. So bad, but why? And in a few days from now, that spot could be empty. These fish do move around a little bit. Like it does happen, but I'm liking it. Let's go find another spot. Let's go find another spot. I've got spots. Just gonna check a couple little bit deeper areas, not crazy deep, like 16 to 20 feet, just in case midday I get a little bit slower of a bite. So we're going to check something, a couple spots out here, just to have in our back pocket as a just in case, as a just in case. Yeah, they're out here, they're out here too. I feel like I'm gonna be fishing more, probably shallow water more than anything, but this will be a couple good spots to have in my back pocket that are a little bit deeper, kind of off the river channel. And they're down there, looks like they're stacked up. Could definitely be, definitely be a midday thing for sure. They're nice, they're nice. It's gonna kill the motor and just drift over this little area here really slow. Real slow like. Things are good. I've got confidence in the shallow bite. I've got some confidence a little bit deeper right now. Things are good. It's I'm totally going jigs. Jigs and leeches. Like I said, whether it's gonna be on a slip bobber or whether I'm gonna fish it vertical, casting. Got a couple different options. I've been trapping my own leeches as anybody maybe been possibly watching. It's been really good lately. I'll do some more videos on that in the future. I've got lots of confidence, no doubt. Look at all of those fish right here. That's a lot of fish. 
That's a lot of fish. That's a lot of fish in there. Just gonna back up here a bit and tell him. Tell him down as we say. And then cast this area a bit, but that was a lot of fish there. You see all of the white specks with the shadows all over the place. Oh, there we go. Scrapper. <laughs> hey, it's the one nice thing when you catch them like in two, three feet of water. They're pretty scrappy. Oh, things are good. Things are good. I've hardly fished and I've slammed fish. I've drove around looking for fish mostly. And I probably have about, I'd say five or six key spots that I found that I will be looking forward to fishing against Jay. Okay, let's go work on our, let's go work on our slip bobber bite like we said we would. We got the jig and the leech down thing. Pretty solid. That's always been one of my probably stronger suits. Gotta learn how to slip bob properly. I did a video not too long ago where I used just this, uh, I snelled the small octopus hook. Today I'm actually gonna run a 1 8 ounce jig. We're gonna do it a little bit different. So we'll set it up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go across the lake here or across the lake and check one more spot and probably slip bob over there. Oh, bobber, 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 bobber. Little guy, but they count, they're all gonna count. These are the ones I want. Okay, wanted to catch one quick one with the bobber and then I'll explain how I'm setting this up. Here's what I got going on. I got a 1 8 ounce bite me jig with a little bobber, not with bobber stopper, with a little, uh, I forget what they're called all of a sudden, bait button there. I have a little bobber that's basically made for a 1 8 ounce jig with a brass fitting. Learn that from Tom Boley. He says you want the bobbers with the brass fit, the brass fillings there, the brass rings, because it won't fray your line. I have a little bead and then I have a bobber stopper. Thread one, which I talked about in a video before. The thread ones right here, that's just pollen or not pollen, poplar dust or something. The thread bobber stoppers will go through your eyelet. So what I'm doing right now is I have this bobber set stop set up at about probably two and a half feet, something like that. I'm gonna take it and I'm actually gonna throw it up quite a bit shallower than two and a half feet. And this bobber will lay on its side. And you can fish it out slow like that and kind of pop it off the bottom, but that bobber is laying on its side right now. And what I'm doing is I'm just popping it out really slow. And once that jig gets to a spot where it's deep enough, where it's just gonna sit about this far off the bottom, that bobber will stand up. A little bit more. And you want to go slow with it. You want to go too fast. Right there, just starts to stand up. So I know now that that jig has created enough tension on that bobber to stand it up, where it's probably just off of the bottom. And that's what I've been. That's what I've been doing to figure out where to put that bobber stopper. Because I know that's like when I first started doing this, I'm like. Where do you put the bobber stopper? How far up the line do you know how to put it? Yeah, okay, you got a seven foot six rod. That's easy to do. You can put it the length of your rod, no problem. But I found this to be a pretty cool technique because you can cast it up in that shallow. And you can still fish it out slow. And as you get a bite, that bobber will shoot back in, right? It'll shoot under. It's kind of a really neat technique that obviously I'm sure other people do it. It'd be a little bit harder when you're fishing from shore because you're casting out deeper and bringing it in shallow. But same thing, I guess you could basically, you could cast it out and reel it in and be like, okay, that spot right there I know is obviously three feet because my bobber just turned on its side. So you can pick that point and you can always cast past that every, every time. We look prepared. We look ready. We're ready for the second J verse clay. I'm gonna beat you down, Jay. Revenge is gonna be amazing. I've got my game plan set up. Jigs, it's gonna, and jigs and leeches. That's it, and it's obviously jigs on slip bobbers type of thing, but that's all we're gonna do. Poked around a little bit. We found probably five to eight spots that we're gonna really focus on. <coughs> Hopefully we get a little bit wind 
more wind like we had when we first started because there was definitely more of a chew then. It kind of slowed down a little bit into the evening, but I also switched over to a slip bobber, whereas if I was pounding them on jigs, I probably would have stayed with that method. I'm gonna be so organized in the boat. We're gonna have a couple rods out so we can grab, switch, quick, throw out, whatever. If I gotta do a retie, throw a bobber out, we're gonna be quick, like quick, quick, quick stuff, quick with stuff because it's all about numbers. It's all about quantity in the next one verse one. Jay verse Clay, I'm coming at you, Jay. Get ready. It's my turn. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, get outside.